Hello, today I thought I'd show you how I put together loose art journal pages into a book like I did for this life book project many years ago. I do have the description of this on my blog but I thought I'd make a video to make it clearer for you. So let's get on with it. This is the stack of pages I've done for my 52 week journal for this year. This is the type of page that I've done. I've used cheap paper that I, I had in art pads that I bought, thinking that it was supposed to be watercolour paper, but it's not really. It's more like a blotting paper. So I've cut it up and I've used that as my backing boards for or backing paper for my pages. It works really well for mixed media because it dries flat. And when you put collage or gesso over the top, it acts just like normal a normal canvas would do. So whatever you have, you can use. This is a collage page, and I've got details of that on my blog of how I did it. So I start with finished pages like this. And then I put them together into pairs. This one's already been glued together with a paper strip. This is actually scrapbooking card. Um, it can be paper or card, it's up to you. I try to match, you can see here that this is actually orange to match this page. And I try to match one of the two pages, that way there's no line down the middle. But if you wanted to, you could do all of that with white and it would look just as good white or black or something like that. I just like to match it so you just got two different pages. So I've done that for all of my pages. Some of them I've put a fold in because it was a very bulky page. There's things on that page like these you might not be able to see. These are very thick and the page itself is thick and I've got these thick buttons on here. So when it's closed, I've just added, put two folds, put the paper around and just made it a bit thicker. Usually I will put the paper down, I'll just show you, with this one. This one's only got a single fold because this is going to go to the inside cover. I'll put that under there and then the inside cover will go on here like that. So, sorry, the cover doesn't go on like that. Cover goes on the, like that. And then I'll put another piece of paper like this one over the top just to hide the inside after I've put the outer cover on. But this is how I join these, the single pages. I put a bit of glue down there, sorry, a bit of glue down that edge and a bit of glue down that edge. So that when I'm sticking them on, and I just put them on like that, not right up to the fold, you need to leave just a, a tiny bit of space for the book to work properly. Now if it's a thicker one, like for example this, I would put it on here, I'll put the glue down here and the glue down here and fold it over onto there. But usually I like to score the card so if it was really thick, I would do another score line just down the centre there, which is what I would have done for this one here. I've put two score lines so I could fold it around that thick page. I've also done that with one of the other pages here. This one was very bulky too. So you can see there's quite a big fold there to allow for the inner inner part 
but the majority of the pages where it's very thin you don't need to allow for extra so that's what I did I've put all of those on there and I've put the adjoining page on there to make this stack now the front page doesn't have a pair although I could actually put the inside cover there but I like to do that afterwards to make sure I get it the right size so the, the front will be like that once I glue that and the back is the same. I've already glued that one on the back page to join to the back cover. When they're all joined together, the next thing I do is simply to glue the pages together. Now it's important for the book to open properly that this folded edge lines up perfectly. You'll see that if this is all lined up, I haven't done a very good job of cutting my pages and they're not quite even doesn't matter I don't care if I thought about it I could have cut all my background pages at the beginning for the whole year and then they would all be exactly the same size but I'm not too fussed about that so I'll make sure that those two line up and I will just glue that to that. Then when I've done that, I'll glue the next one on and end up with this highest, entire stack glued together, including the back cover, the back page and the front page. I've glued all my pages together now. And the whole thing is like a book already. You can see here where some of the pages are wider than others, some of the joins, which is what I was showing earlier. And I've got the two, the back page and the front page flaps that will secure the cover. The very last step that I will do is to add a fabric strip to this area to make it stronger because at the moment it's only paper and card that's holding the pages together and I just like to add a strip of fabric leave it to dry overnight and then there's no way this book will ever come apart so I'll just grab my piece of fabric now okay here I have a piece of fabric that I'm going to use it's nothing special it's just a bit of synthetic doesn't have to be just use whatever you have if you haven't got any bits of fabric just get some old clothes and cut a strip out of that and I'm using PVA glue this is the the glue I use to glue the pages together as well it worked quite well and dried within minutes so I'm going to put quite a lot of glue along this spine of the book I'm trying not to take it over the edge because I don't want it to drip down the sides and glue the pages together. Now my piece of fabric comes down the side of these flaps as well because that will be secured to the covers of the book because that will make the whole thing really secure later on. Now I just take my piece of fabric. I didn't bother doing hems or anything because you're gluing it. Um, it won't fray. And I'm just putting a little bit of extra glue on top and I'm really pressing it down onto the spines of those pages because I really want to secure every page to this fabric backing if I can. I am pretty generous with the glue. The glue acts like a um, plastic layer 
that also helps to secure everything so I'm perfectly fine putting a lot of glue on and that's it I'll leave that overnight to dry for my cover I'm using these two bits of cardboard which were actually the cardboard from the pads of paper that I'd used these were the backing pages so they're quite thick and they'll make nice covers for my journal because they're this grey cover and I'm going to use this batik material that I made for my cover I thought that the grey background makes the material a little dull so I've painted one side and you can see how much brighter it is on this side compared to this side so I've just quickly given it a coat of gesso so that when I put this on I will have a bright green backing and I've got some printed papers I made from an online printing course I did and I'm just going to use these on the inside of my cover because when I put this on I'll fo fold the edges over and I want to hide all of this so I will cut these to size and put them on for the inside papers Okay, so now I've glued on the fabric to the spine and let it dry overnight and it's quite stiff. When you first open your pages it may be a little stiff but after you've opened it a few times it opens fine. I've also covered my bits of cardboard with my fabric. Instead of using a piece of cardboard in the middle here, I've just put on some iron-on interfacing to make it a little stiffer, but I didn't want to make it too stiff to bend because with this journal it needs to bend like that. You need to leave a little bit of a gap and then your covers go on. And the covers will be put on not in line with the spine, but a little bit in. Not very much, just enough so that when it opens it doesn't hit these pages here otherwise it won't open properly. So it would probably go about there, probably just a tiny bit peeking out and it will extend just past the pages because I wanted to protect the pages. So it's a little bit bigger all around but that's just my personal preference. You could make it the same size if you want to. So to cover this I've put matte gel medium all over the cardboard and then just laid the fabric on it without pressing too hard I just lightly pressed it in otherwise the gel medium will come through the fabric that's why I use matte because if it does come through you won't see it this edge down here actually had some of the gel medium come through but you can't tell so once that dried I let that dry I did the front and back at the same time, let them dry. When it was dry, I flipped it over and just glued the edges down. So when it's fitted, it will go on here. This will be glued to here. And the same with the back cover. This bit will be glued to here. And then once that's done, it will actually be secure. And the, one of the last things I'll do after that is to cut my piece of end paper to size and I will just glue that in place over the inside cover there and the same for the back cover. And the reason I like the fabric along here is because I'm going to do a line of stitching down here by hand and it will go through the fabric and also through the paper and it will make everything secure it will stop the inner pages tearing away from the book cover which often happens even with purchased books 
because these pages are so heavy and thick I just like to make sure that it's secure with that stitching down there so that's why I said to put the fabric over the edge it's just an extra security and you'll see that there should be a little bit of give in here if you put some card in the in the spine there to make it if you wanted to make it a bit stiffer you could use some card but you still need to have a little bit of give so that when you open the book this is what happens to that cover see how it's bending so you could use cardstock but I wouldn't use cardboard or something stiff the interfacing seems to be working quite well so I'll probably do that in the future so now I'll just glue those together and then I'll use my awl to poke holes through along here and then I'll hand stitch it and that will be my journal complete so now I've finished the book you can see how I've added that row of stitching which secures the front and back covers and I've also stitched the back as well so that's not going to come apart and all the pages are secure I have details of most of the pages how I did them on my blog some of them you have to go back to the beginning of 2017 and they will go all the way through the year I do like these um, flocked paper pages was an interesting thing and I've finally used that paper which I bought for scrapbooking and never used I like to experiment with different techniques different things that I've seen like the smearing a little bit of Vaseline over a layer of paint and putting another layer on you get this peeled paint effect just using some unique buttons some envelope papers This one has become the inspiration for a journal for a textile. And I've also been experimenting throughout the year with writing, different types of writing. Sometimes I didn't use the prompt from Colour Me Positive. I've just done Fibers West was a retreat that I did this year. Or if I wasn't inspired by the quote that was provided, I just did my own thing. Here I just sketched everything that was on my table. Here I just had these butterfly cutouts given to me and a few other bits and pieces of painted papers so I thought I'd use them in some way and that's how this page began. Sometimes I just look through um, past projects and things and get inspired to do something similar
This is another one of the flocked papers. It's a very interesting paper. I, I wouldn't know where you could get it now. I probably had it in my stash for 10 years. This one was actually a garage sale that my husband and I did and I just drew pictures of some of the things that we were selling. So I've included that. This was a little holiday we went to Floriard in Canberra which was full of these beautiful flowers. And sometimes I just went random. Just started with this little card here and just grew a page from that. Towards the end of the year I started to get into doodling a bit. I just wanted to sit and draw so a lot of these pages are similar sorts of things. These are another gift, the silver butterflies which I've coloured and stuck to my page. And the caterpillars were actually bubble wrap printed on, painted and stamped onto paper. And then I just cut out the bubbles. Looks quite interesting. This one's a workshop that I bought from Cloth Paper Scissors. Um, it's, I can't remember which ser series it is, but you'll, you'll see it on their website. It's one of their um, journal workshop videos. This one was inspired by a Diana Trout layout, which was in one of the free ebooks from Cloth Paper Scissors, free download, and it was about mixed media. So that was fun to do, and I really like the effects. So I probably will do more of those, although if I'm doing them in a pre-bought um, art journal, I probably won't do stitching because it's too hard when the page is already glued in. This one was inspired by Julie Fafan Bowser. Not sure if that's how you spell her name. Apologies if it's incorrect. But um, she had pages with the black background similar on um, in the Zen Doodle workshop magazine that I bought. I just thought it was a fantastic technique, so that's what I've done here. I probably did it completely differently to her, but um, I just like the effect of the black. And I probably will do that again, because it was fun just to sit and colour in all that black. And this one was just a bit of fun. My husband gave me some old keys, so they're in here. Some of them are in here. This one was actually the first page I did for the year, but because I did a title page for this journal, I've put this at the back now. And that's it. Thank you for having a look.